Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2023 film When Evil Lurks. It's a Shutter exclusive and it's coming to Shutter on Friday, October 27th. So this is a no spoiler review. Now that said, I'm going to say something about kind of like the subtext, the thematic stuff at the very end, but I will warn you before I say that. Also might make a comparison to some other films, so I will warn you before that so you can just kind of drop off. Uh, but again, that's going to be at the very end. So I'm going to say off the top, do recommend this one. I highly recommend this one. It, you should definitely, definitely see it now. It's an Argentinian film, so it is Spanish subtitles. So I know there are some people out there when they hear that, they're like, oh, it's subtitle, I have to read. Some movies are worth it. Actually, a lot of movies are worth it. Do yourself a favor and do this. If you are a horror fan who likes very interesting stories, especially if you like movies that have a focus on possession because... Some people may say, oh, it's a possession movie, you shouldn't have said that, it's a spoiler. Not really. If you've seen the trailer, it's going to give you way more information about what goes on in the film than what I'm going to tell you. Also, I can't give you a synopsis at all without telling you that in it is a possession film. Is and is not to a degree. I mean, it's, it's a possession film, but it's not a typical American possession film. And that's a subgenre that I haven't been a fan of, possession films, but... This one, quite enjoyed uh, a very, very different take on things. So, anyway, uh, this one's written and directed by Damien Rugna, uh, Damien Rugna, who also did The Last Gateway, Cursed Bastards, and Terrified, which, yes, Terrified, I believe, is still on Shudder. That's one that people had told me uh, a lot of good things about, that it's, like, legitimately scary and creepy. And it's one that I still haven't seen it's one of many movies that's just, it's been on the list to get to, and I just, I haven't done it yet. So, after seeing this, it de definitely makes me want to bump that up the list, though, because Rugna really knows what he's doing as far as directing goes, as far as using an awesome cinematographer, a lot of things. Uh, also, um, writing. Very, very strong writer. And here's the thing. You, it's hard to find a writer-director that is this good at both of those things. Being a really good director and a really good writer, that's hard to find. But Rogna is the real deal. Uh, again, Shutter exclusive coming Friday, October 27th. So, synopsis. It is about some guys who become aware of a possession that's happened in, a, in their town. Or I, I think it might be like a town kind of like adjacent, but close to them. And... Someone was supposed to come and help with that possession. They did not end up making it there, so they go and kind of end up taking things into their own hands. And what they end up doing sets off a chain of events that becomes bad, basically. It leads to all the horror that ends up happening in this film, which it's not really giving anything away because, you know, if things get resolved quickly in a, in a movie, it's not you know, it's not going to continue. It's, it doesn't become a horror movie in this instance. So, yeah, but uh, things go very, very wrong, and it's all about where it goes from there. Um, it's a good one. Immediately, it looks great. It has interesting camera movements, really interesting shot framing. Cinematography is wonderful in this movie. I mean, just in the, the opening sequence... You have some very interesting smooth camera movements, kind of like exploring a lot of space around the characters. I love that type of stuff. Mario Bava is my favorite director, and he was notorious, well, not notorious, but he was well known for doing a lot of that, like smooth, interesting camera work that's kind of always keeping things moving. Uh, Rugna's doing that. I love it. It looks wonderful. Um, and just in general, it looks like a really nice looking film. Um Kind of dark in its color palette, but that's a typical thing for horror movies these days. Uh, the score is really good. That's another thing. The score, it can get a bit loud from time to time and feel like maybe it's yelling at you slightly, but it never becomes annoying. It feels appropriate, and the composition of the score is so good. It does such an amazing job of immersing you further in the kind of like intensity, the dread that's going on in the film. Just feeling all the emotions that the score is really trying to make you feel and it's it just sounds great and it's really really well used in my opinion uh it gets interesting and gross relatively early and that's one of the things is there is some gross stuff in this there is a decent amount of gore to it there is a a 
certain level of brutality to it as well. So if those are things that are kind of hard for you with uh, horror films, this might be a bit of a hard watch to, uh, for you. That said, there isn't an inordinate amount in it. It's not like it's like the movie The Sadness that may still be on Shutter right now. I don't remember if it is or is not, but the sadness where it's just like all about the gore and all about the practical effects. This is not it, but the gore and the practical effects when they happen are really good. Uh, there's a sense of tension even when not much is going on in this film for the most part, uh, which is due primarily to the combination of cinematography and the score, how good it looks and how they do the shots with uh, combined with that really interesting score that's, like I was saying, very good at making you feel that kind of dread, that intensity and everything. It keeps you kind of on edge. It makes you feel like anything could happen at any time, and it doesn't really let you let your guard down even when it's a more, <clears throat> um, I don't want to say droll, but like a more subdued uh, scene where people are kind of just talking and you're just kind of getting a little bit of exposition. Um, the combination of the cinematography and the score also is used really well to make you feel utter chaos at certain times. One time in particular that just feels like it's, it's a chaotic thing. It kind of I wouldn't say it comes out of nowhere, but it is shocking what they do with it. I literally verbalized, and I was watching this by myself, I literally like yelled out, oh my, like, I don't even remember what I said, but I like yelled out because I was in such disbelief that they took things the way they did. It's shocking. It will be shocking to some people. And just how they did the camera work and how they used the score in that moment and where things led it feels like chaos. You feel what those characters must be feeling in that moment where things are just like, you don't know what's going on. You're trying to get a handle on things. You're trying to get your bearings and you just feel like you can't. So it's really well done from that aspect. Um, when things turn in this movie, it's sharp. You know it for sure. Things go down and it is very strongly that they go down. Uh, Pointing to that event I was talking about that's just kind of shocking and that kind of lets you know what type of film this is. Uh, you can just see where things are going wrong, but the characters actually can't. Now, this is sometimes a problem in films where they they end up being too transparent, where it's just like, okay, I know exactly where this is going. With this one, you do know where things are going. You don't know exactly what they're going to do and how those things are going to play out. But you do know that bad things are coming in certain instances and the characters don't know it. And it, it's kind of one of those things where as the audience member, it makes you even more invested because it makes you feel more because you're more like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen, isn't it? And this person has no idea. They're going to go right into this and this is going to be bad, like that type of stuff. Um, I think it works really well. So it can be a problem, but it's it's good in this. Uh, the acting's really good. Really good performances. I didn't see a single performance that I thought was, you know, mid, mid or bad or any of that. It, Yeah, great performances. Uh, people talk about the feeling of dread that this movie creates. Uh, that is quite accurate. It definitely has a lot of strong moments of just feeling dread and sustaining that feeling, which obviously doesn't feel good. It makes you kind of on edge, but for a horror movie, that's very effective. It works really well, and I love that about this movie. Um, and when I say people are people have said that, uh, the movie had been in theaters already, uh, and then it's going to shutter, and a lot of people were praising this film. I, I definitely see why, and a lot of people were saying that it just has this feeling of dread throughout the whole film and I wouldn't say throughout the whole film but very strongly for large parts of the film there is a portion in the later section that does slow down too much in my opinion pacing is really good in the beginning it hits kind of hits the ground running to a degree but then I think probably between like the 40 40 minute to like an hour and 10 minute somewhere in there, an hour, hour and 10 minute. Um, I think in that spot, they kind of hit a little bit of a lull that I wish they would have kind of kept that pacing going a little bit more because it does feel a little bit like a speed bump. Like you're kind of like going along, going along. You're like, oh, uh, it slows, it slows it down too much. But that said, still overall pacing good. Um, they do a good job of laying out specific rules for the film. Now, you'll understand what I'm talking about. I don't want to go too far into those, but certain rules about 
kind of the story they're trying to tell and how things in that world operate. Um, they do a good job of kind of laying that stuff out. Now, that said, I do have some questions about some things having to do with characters that I think are a little bit plot holes. Not gigantic plot holes, but definitely kind of plot holes. But um, it's nothing you can't overlook because it is a really good movie. Uh, the ending strikes a certain mood, and the way it's done is very effective. I'm being vague because I don't want people to know too much. I have seen some people making some comments that they're trying to not um, they're trying to not tell you the events of the movie, but they're also saying exactly how the movie ends in a way by saying like certain feelings. And I was just like, I don't want to do that. So <laughs> there is a certain mood. It's very effectively done. You'll know what I'm talking about if you see this. It's a good ending, I think, for what for what the story is. Uh, this movie does go places you don't expect, and it's messed up. Uh, this goes back to what I was saying before about that shocking moment in the film in particular, and it might be a lot for some people to handle in that sense. It's not unrelenting, though. Just know that. it's Like I said, it's not like the sadness. It is not to that degree. It's like less than half of the sadness, but it's effective for what it's trying to do. Um, now, this is the part where I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, like, the, the the theme, subtext stuff. But before I do that, I'll just say, um, out of five stars, half stars in play, I'm giving this a very good four-star rating. I think this is a very good film. One of the best horror films this year, in my opinion, and everyone should definitely watch it. Okay, so now people can drop out if you don't want, like, the subtext thematic stuff. And I think I'm also going to make a comparison to uh, two films that I kind of feel like it's a mixture of. Uh, this feels like it's about hitting a low point in life and feeling like you can't do anything right and everything around you is out of control. I kind of view this as a little bit of like a, a mental health type movie, like this is a personification of mental health struggles, kind of similar to what Pascal Laguier did with Martyrs. Um, it's not, you know, they're not exactly the same, but there is some kind of connective tissue thematically between those two. I really do think it's that kind of representation of potentially like depression, of going through something terrible in your life and just feeling like you just don't have control and everything's just kind of spiraling around you and everything that you do isn't helpful really, you know? So that's kind of what I see in this film. It might not have been what was intended, but that's what I end up seeing. The, the last thing is this felt like two movies combined to me although its own version of these movies put together. Fallen and, um, yes, the one with Denzel Washington, and I believe John Goodman's in that too, who I love. Uh, Fallen and The Dark and the Wicked, which I wasn't a huge fan of The Dark and the Wicked, um, might also still be on Shudder, but the look and the feel of it is what I'm kind of drawing from there. So, anyway, um... Again, four stars on this one. Would love to hear other people's opinions, whether you liked it, didn't, in between, whatever. Go ahead and put it in the comments. You can give me a sentence or two letting me know why you feel that way, and we can talk about it. Um, hopefully people do like this. I think it's quite good, and I'm very interested to see what Rugna does next. I would love to watch that. Hopefully it comes to Shudder too. Um, but do me a favor, hit thumbs up on this if you want to help boost the visibility of this video. Hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because that's your best way to repay me for all this free content. If you like even one video, and you can hit the notification bell button if you want to know when I have new videos coming out, which I'm doing at least three a week. So I think that's a pretty good amount. Anyway, thanks for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.